Hello! Let's see if this is working. Good evening all. Hey Zulu, Jay, Sporidus, Darius, Pomnipimp. Um, let's see what else is going on here. Who else is in the room? Dun 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 dun. Sergeant Queef, Uglast. Elevator Simulator, hello hello. Alright. Okay, so... This stream is going to be a little different from normal, because I normally have something that's, you know, achievable, like a, a task to do in the hours. Uh, this time we're just going to screw around with some bindings that are completely unfinished um, and maybe buggy uh, to a physics engine, which is lacking quite a bit of documentation. So this is going to be a hairy one, and chances are this might just crash and burn and then we end this stream but we're gonna have a fuck around with it anyway we're starting from what we had last week with slightly different textures um let me jump over to the other side audio and video okay thank you that's awesome uh so yes because the shadows are nice i'm just leaving that in um it's just ah, it's just so satisfying to have that working so let's start somewhere uh, that's not where I want to start. I want to start in a browser, so let's kick one of them off. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, oh yeah, I was looking at this engine a minute ago. Uh, what do we want to find? Okay, so Newton Dynamics is the um, engine we are going to be looking at. Um, the reason I chose to wrap up this one, other than the fact there were no bindings for it already, was that um, Newton was one I messed around with. There was a... La there was a uh, environment language whatever dart basic pro many 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 years ago i used to play with that and i loved it and someone had uh bindings for this physics engine then and um even though i was like really new to everything i, I found it quite easy to work with um it could have been the documentation for those bindings was good but but whatever it was it was it was nice and it was easy to play with um that kind of analogies were, were simple so i wanted to have a look at it again and there are some other nice things about it. For example, it's under the Zlib license. It's very permissive. Um, it is has a solid C API, so it beats like for for, for me that beats uh, Bullet and stuff like that, where the primary API is C plus plus, understandably. Um, and I tried out ODE, but and this is pretty much purely down to me. I could never get it to be stable. I, I followed the guide to get some spheres in a scene and a ground, and they would. Fall, hit the ground, turn a bit, fall through, and that was it, gone. And and there were lots of posts of similar having people problems, people having similar problems, similar people having similar problems, whatever. Um, and the answers were a little worrying because they tended to be, oh yeah, there's this thing that you can tweak to change this and some fudge factor, and it was just, it didn't inspire confidence. Um, us asking, are there any open source physics engine with non-sucking ducks? I don't know, man. Is the, are the ODE ones bad? Well, I remember having some issues there. Was it like the version stuff is weird there? Yeah, I don't know. So um, so basically, I went back to something that at least at some point made me happy. Um, and we are going to, rather than use this site, um, we're going to go and search for documentation. And there's a read the docs site so what there is at least at least is easy to read here there's not much but there's enough to get going so what i did was twofold uh let's go to github me right i have um a couple of libraries there's raw bindings newton which again all of these are work in progress but it's using um CFFI's um, interface to C to FFI to generate uh, very raw bindings. So what we have in here uh, is no Lispification on top. We have the specs and we have the generated um, CFFI types and functions and all that kind of stuff. Original names, no, basically as raw as it can get. And the reason I like having these as separate packages is it, whenever you abstract something there's a certain amount of taste that goes into it and it might not be to everyone's taste so by having the ffi part separate if someone who doesn't like what i've done they can have their own go at it and at least we can share 
something that is always going to be the same for all of us, which is the actual bindings over the library itself. Um, so I'm trying to do that now. This isn't ready for prime time yet, but getting there. Um, I've, there's a bug in CFFI that I need to have a look at to do with generating specs for the unions with, um, I think it's union with like a field with no name or something like this. I, I don't entirely understand it yet. There's something missing. Um, Borodas says, I've stopped with ODE because I found some old but f um, fairly good guy for it. Oh, yes. So, um, I've stopped with, oh, yeah. oh you, I see, you've stayed with ODE because you found some old but fairly good guy for it. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's like, for me, it's, I end up just kind of Googling for the function names and there's normally some forum post about whatever it is. And we're going to muddle through that today. I'm hoping that I can actually contribute to their docs in the end. So we get these raw bindings, um, and the other part of this is Isaac, which is the lispifying part. As you can see, I haven't much, done much work on it yet. Comes in spurts. And this just, um, yeah, actually provides the bit that makes it feel like Lisp. And this is a really basic example without any rendering at all. Um, all it does is you create a world. You can have multiple physics worlds and they don't interact with each other. You, um, we're creating a floor, which is just making some geometry. Okay, so the geometry is a, like a, the geometrical representation for collisions. Um, so you might be a sphere or, in this case, a geometry tree, uh, which we'll come back to probably another time. Uh, and once you've made some geometry, you can make a body from it. And this is the actual thing that's going to be simulated in the physics world. So we say here which world it's in and which geometry um, to use. And you can have one geometry to many bodies and all that kind of stuff. So sim simple enough there. And with the ball, again, we're doing a little bit more. Um, oh yeah, what was the one thing? Oh yeah, geometry tree Yeah, is taking these points. So this is actually taking some uh, list data and essentially making vertices. So what we're getting here is a quad. Um, so that's that. And then down here, we make a sphere um, of a given radius in this world. We then have this helper with geometry. And um, I can't remember what that's for, so we'll, we'll probably look at that in a minute. But anyway, we make a body, again, uh, using this geometry with some extra information. This time, by saying a mass, um, it's going to join in with the physics simulation. It's actually going to be like an animate object um, that's going to move around. And then we set a callback, which is going to be called every tick um, to apply some force to it or do whatever we like. In this case, we're going to use the function apply gravity, which is here. And all we do is grab the mass um, and we set some force on it based on the mass. So we're just adding gravity here is what we're doing. Um, and then we set, oh yeah, it's original um, matrix four. So it's translation in the world. And then all this does down here is run it for 300 steps and print out uh, the map form. That was enough for me to see that things were working. But we want to do something more exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to take control away from our update method um, and use instead, hopefully, the physics engine to drive these guys. And we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. So the first thing we need to do, I'm just going to steal some code from here. That'll probably be the quickest way to get started. Um, let's go back to... We're on a um, new branch today. We are on episode 19. Looks like there's something here I haven't pushed yet. I'll just, okay, this bit is a bit of tidying. So it's fits in our screen. And this bit is, yeah, just getting rid of some debugging. Nothing I really need to push. So I won't worry about that yet. We will go to play with that Lisp and we will set up our physics world. Let's do this. <laughs> it's going to crash straight away. Of course, yes. So I haven't actually added this to... I've quick-loaded Isaac. Um, but I haven't done any more than that. So what I need to do is go to package. And can I just get away with doing... Oops. Isaac? Okay, there's conflicts because we just used that symbol. Take the new one and we're good. Okay, fine. So now we do this, and we have a physics world, which is excellent. Um, I've made at least a little bit of effort 
to um, try and make it kind of fast because obviously we're we're mapping, um, yeah, just making making nice bindings to, has some has some interesting parts to it. What I do is I keep for all the bodies in the simulation I'm keeping just a, an array of um, the equivalent Lisp objects, and when we get a body pointer back, so every um, object in this engine is a, has a user data field which is a pointer so essentially there in your in in c code you could just shove a pointer to any other object um, and it's never touched by the engine what i do is instead is take the id of the body so i give every body a number which in this case is going to be an index into that array turn that into a pointer and shove it in there and then when we get bodies back we just take that out of user data and use it as an index to get the list object it's fiddly, but it's a way, I mean, like, it's way better than hashing on the pointer of the object itself or something like that. Disgusting. Anyway, so, yak, yak, yak goes, Chris. Right, let's, um, let's do some stuff. Okay, well, there's not actually that much to do. Oh, yeah, we're going to need to step the world. This needs to happen every frame. So let's, um, we're going to just put that here. Run physics. We're going to need a stepper. Um, first step. A stepper. And it looks like I haven't got the usual thing enabled. Go on hints. Yep. I want it to happen. Um, I want my step size to be, what is it? No point not to or something like that. Basically, we'll just say we'll run the um, physics engine 100 times a second. And we'll go while. Fun call fizz step. World step. Um, wait a second. While? No. <laughs> Loop. Is there a loop while? I can never remember with this. Or loop until or something like that. Come on, Chris. Where's the things? Until? Yeah. Oh, well, there is a while, actually. So loop until. So what this stepper object is, is it's a closure, and every time you call it, um, it will return, let's just do this. It measures the amount of time since it was last called. And it has a little cache of time, so every time you call it, if it's been more than 0 0.01 seconds, um, it's going to, oh, I just remembered something, it's going to return... Um, True. This number has meaning as well, but I won't go into that. So let's do loop for i below 100. Do this. Right, and then after a while, it's going to start returning. Wait a second. Oh yeah, I just can't keep up fast enough to do it. Um, it'll return nil until that this amount of time has passed. So it, essentially we're going to use this as a stepper. We're going to run... Whoa, wait a second. Loop until do. Let's try that. Um, world step, we don't need that. Oh, sorry, wait a second. 0 0.01. Yes, I think that's right. That's <laughs> confusing myself now. Um, step 1 over 60. Oh yeah, I'm not using step as that. I think this will be okay. I think what should be happening now is um, this is going to get called essentially, effectively, um, every 0 0.1 seconds with this fixed time step. I just need to make sure I've got this right. Time step, step size. Did I write docs for this? No. Fool. I'm pretty sure that's I'm not sure if this is milliseconds or seconds, uh, which is sucky. And boy, have I not been back to this code in a while. Look at all this horrible indentation. 
step size, time cache step size. This strikes me as if it's done in internal time. Um, right, got to do a quick test. It's going to be this kind of stream. Temp zero. Mix stepper. This would be three seconds if this was right, and I think I'm wrong. So, one call temp zero. Nah, I think this is three milliseconds. It would make sense because I think, oops, probably def var. Okay, so this will be nil, and then every three seconds it will return a true value. Right, so this is wrong. Um, this should be... Da -da 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 -da. What should it be? Seconds 0.01. There we go. Now world step, I don't know what it expects that time to be, but we've got one over 60 here. So it seems to be taking this in seconds as well. This will be 1 60th of a second is the default. So yeah, 0 0.01 should be fine. Another thing I want to do is I'm going to unset the, fuck me, set the frame rate to be unbound because I feel like it. it's SDL2. Where did I put that actually? I think it was keppel.sdl2. And then I think it was something in here like um, vsync, it's true, set up that to nil. Um, we print the delta a little just to get a rough idea of what we're getting here. Small. Fair enough. Um, oh yeah, that's in seconds, isn't it? Ugh, that's kind of gross, actually. That Those numbers coming out of there were pretty horrible. Hmm. Jesus, that's like a thousandth of a second or something. Ugh. Gonna have to get a higher resolution timer for that. Are we really getting a thousand frames a second on that? It's possible, I suppose. Maybe we'll set this to VSync for now and just see how see how we go. I don't like the sound of that otherwise. Oh, we'll see. Let's see what's going on over here. Sorry, I've been ignoring you for a minute. I've been busy confusing myself. Right. Ah, oh, thanks, uh, Borodos, for linking the OD guide. We will have to link that somewhere else. Isn't there some rumor of YouTube not allowing um, external links unless you're paying now or something stupid? Or, no, you're going to be some... Unless you've monetized your account, you can't have hyperlinks or something fucking stupid. Hey, Van Laser. And hey, Pixel Outlaw, too. Hey, man. Jesus, you folks are up late. That's cool. <laughs> Not one glance at the chat. This is this is bag is just wondering how much things are broken. Um, <laughs> so let's go and um, unfuck some things. So now. Actually, let's go get that example code here. Isaac, examples, falling ball. We want to make a mesh for the floor for a start. So I think we're going to do it similar to this. So when we make the ground, let's just dump this here. We're not going to be setting some any callbacks we are going to have to set its position though, so... Ugh. 
let's get this. Position of object. We make a body, make some geometry. Can't remember what with geometry was for. Um, oh, I see it just as a way to free the geometry at the end of the block. Fine, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't actually need geometry objects um, once you've created the body. That's all handled internally. Slowly remembering things about this physics engine, just very vaguely. Right, so make body. Uh, the world is world, the geometry is whatever this is. Um, we're not going to be making a sphere, we're going to be making... Hey, there is box geometry, nice! And what does it take? It takes some dimensions and an offset. Well, we don't need an offset, but we could give it some dimensions. And what have we been using? Well, these are our dimensions for our box up here, so we'll use those. What else? What else? What else? Some object here. We're also going to need to keep this body with the object. So let's just do fizz body is um, in it arc. Ah, screw that. Let's just do an accessor. Can I not spell accessor? Yeah, I can. There we go. It's just not completed for me. Accessor is fizzbody. Yeah, that should do it roughly. Nope. <laughs> oh yeah, you mop it. Undefined variable world. Yep, we got to do that. Undefined variable objects, of course, we're not in scope. And that'll be fine. So hopefully, if we remade this now, we would have a physics object for the ground. Um, let's, let's just try it, let's see what happens. I mean, we won't be able to tell if it's actually worked properly yet, but Apparently, let's have a look at the things and inspect that. Well, it does have a body. And there's its pointer and it's got no other callbacks set on it. So that's cool. In fact, let's go back there again and just see what, oops. Take that object and call, what is it? Um, body mass, does that work? Nice. Wonder what that second value is. Returns the mass and a VEC3 containing the moment of inertia of the object. Ah, oh, sweet. Cool. Wait a second, though. We don't want this to have a mass. Otherwise, it's going to fall all the time. Um, hmm. That's interesting, actually. Oh, yeah. We've set it here. Idiot. Now, if I reset what's going to happen to the other object, I don't think that's going to be good. So let's, uh, I think there's a Newton command for delete all bodies or something like this. Let's have a look. Newton Dynamics World. Um, that's a bunch of stuff. Maybe it's in the body section. Or MISC, maybe. Nope. What about memory? So now, let's have a look. What's going on over here? 
Speaking of ODE behavior, I too did have problems with it and uh, system explosions, but that was really due to uh, broken defaults of ODE. Ah, okay, right. So it might just be that I never got beyond the D point. Uh, blah, defaults. <laughs> After tweaking, Mew and friends for services. Yeah, that's the stuff where I started just getting worried. Pixel Outlaw is 9F0, different from just using 9.0. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, well... It should be the same. I mean, I'm just making sure it definitely is a floating point number. Uh, sorry, a single float, because so many of my APIs take that. And it's kind of just become a habit to write that all the time now. Um, so yeah. Hey, Barrett, how you doing, man? Well, don't, <laughs> no worries that you're late. It's like five in the morning or something over there. Um, and true, unfortunately, one would need to adjust two global magic parameters to stabilize system one preferences. Yes. That's ex exactly, exactly what I was doing. And I just never found the correct numbers for that. Oh, that's such a pain. Such a pain. Right. So Barrett and um, Van Laser and anyone kind of turned up a little later. Today is, not a, is kind of a, not a proper stream in that I'm going... I, I don't actually know what I'm doing at all this week. This is just a play with some unfinished bindings and see if we get anything interesting. Um, so yeah. Don't worry if it's... Uh, if it's not your thing today, that's no worries. But I just kind of want to hang out with you folks and see where we can get. Um, I'm pretty sure there was a delete or something like this. Oh, here we go. Search. Oh, man. Activate JavaScript. Fine. Yeah, read the docs is okay. I can live with read the docs being on a math jack, so I'll trust you enough. Oh, so no delete. Okay. All right, what are you? So, group ID, I think, is to do with materials. So you 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 create this um, an ID for material, and there's no other information on it. And then what you do is you define, uh, you take a pair of IDs, and you define the relationship between them. So kind of like when they hit, what is the rebound force, and all this kind of stuff. There's, there's a bunch of things to set. Um, but that's generally how it is. You define materials and you find the relationship between materials and then it kind of works. And you have a lot of control as well of various things I don't understand, but I'll get to that, I guess. Um, oh, let's just go through quickly and just, okay, so delete's not there. There's no delete there. Oh, it's, ah, the terminology's destroy, that's why. Destroy. Okay, here we go. Destroy all bodies. That sounds like what I want uh, in world. Okay. Destroy, destroy all bodies. Nice. This is it. So whenever we reset, we want to destroy all the bodies. I think that's fair. Um, play with verts. Reset. I wonder how I've exposed this. Um, destroy all materials. Ah, sorry, let's go Isaac and just see what we've got in there. Destroy. I can never type destroy, it's always the story. Uh, destroy all bodies. Ah, well, destroy all bodies. Fine, that's fine. Easy. World, destroy. Oh boy. World. Um, and we just make sure there is a world. Okay, so that's fine. And then we dump the normal things list, which is going to mean all the objects that were in the scene disappear. Okay, so that's cool. So hopefully... Hopefully that's not exploding too much now. Hard to tell. We'll see as we'll see as this goes on. Geometry, reset. Okay. Start from here. And I will check one more time that this physics body has the oops. 
mass I was expecting, which is zero. Perfect. Very good. And now let's basically do the same thing for our sphere. Where's our sphere? Down here. Right. Sphere. Da -da -da -da. If we move physics body up to... Um, thing? Maybe that's an idea. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Now, let's just make a subclass. Oh. So we take thing. This is a fizz thing. How does this like being redefined in this way? Ah, fine with it. Cool. God, I love this. Right. And we'll do a reset. Oh, okay. There's no standard method for the generic function. Fizz body, I guess, when called with this. Okay, that's rather annoying. Oh yeah, I haven't pasted fizz body in here yet. Oh no, that was meant to... That's why you made this class, you fool! Uh, let's just abort that. Reset and then keep going. Cool. Um, now we should be able to go and change sphere into a fizz thing. Um, a regular thing. We'll take this down to here. If this doesn't work, then it's going to involve me just staring at the screen log going, hmm, for ages, which I'm sure will be fantastic TV. Um, okay, so we make an instance of sphere, that's what we did here, and then we push the set position of sphere to be pulse. Yep. Push the sphere onto things, turn the sphere. see what else do we need to do well there's nothing called object anymore so let's change that to sphere well it's not weeping yet let's um let's see what happens when we make one of these oh yeah there's an update method oh crap um what should this actually be this should be set the position of the thing to be... Actually, this is interesting. So we need to get... See, up till now we've been setting the position and the rotation, and the rotation's been a quaternion. But now, it's a little different, because... Um, our physics bodies, if we go and look at body... The primary way of getting information out of it... Oh no, there is a position! Oh, and there's a rotation as well, holy crap! Oh, please say that's in a quaternion, that would be really nice. Body rotation of the fizz body of the sphere. No, okay, that's not quite what we want. Also, in, out of interest, what's its position right now? Ugh. Okay. Oh yeah, of course, that makes sense. Um, let's set our temp value to be this for now. Um, let's get the body position of temp zero. Okay, so it's still at five. Which makes a lot of sense actually, because we haven't we set the mass to be zero and we haven't added any other callbacks. So first thing I'm going to do is stop that because that's just bugging me. Um, the mass is going to be one for now, and we need to get the callbacks, the gravity callbacks that we had in that example, whatever that was called. Zero falling ball example. Here we go. So we'll grab apply gravity. And what do we do with it? 
the force torque callback for the body. Sure. Let's do that. And we haven't compiled apply gravity yet, so that'll be a problem. And now we see what chat's doing. Then I can drink more coffee as well. Um, by the way, Bagus, does Newton Dynamic have collision detection and dynamics simulation separated? I don't know, actually. I don't know what it's doing internally. Um, ODA is quite um, um, matrices for uh, rotation. That is cool. Uh, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't matter because if I've got a map for, that's fine. I just need to change a couple of things. <laughs> Barad, Higgs on strike, no mass for you. Uh, that's excellent. Um, yeah. We'll see, I guess. Oh, man. Coffee. I'm just running on this today. Even more than usual because I did not sleep enough last night. Computers are cool, but they don't promote sleep. Okay, so. Ostensibly, is this okay? I tell you what we can do, just as a fudge factor for now, is we can take the body position from there. We won't worry about the rotation for a second. Let's just see if we can get the body to position itself correctly. That would be cool. Um, and when we're making this geometry... Oh, we've still got box geometry up here. That's not good. Sphere geometry. Sphere geometry has a radius. And there is no offset. Oh yeah, we need world up here. And the radius is going to be whatever the radius of... What radius are we using in here at the moment? Three, okay. Magic numbers everywhere. It's got magic in the word. It's got to be good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, so what's this? Constant 3 conflicts with... Oh, nice. Types, people. I love them. Oh, yeah, that's... um. The reason I wanted to try out Newton was because over the weekend I went through and typed all the code. Um, so... It works... Where is it? Isaac. Body and stuff like this. I've got all these uh, defn functions and just every single thing is typed. I ran um, a profiler on this a little while ago and was happy to see that it was running at decent speed. Um, but I was noticing a bit of overhead just on the Lisp side. So I've gone through and taken out as much incidental um, slowness as I could just by, you know, Setting, setting speed and setting types to something sensible. I mean, these are very well-defined things because it's essentially calling down to a C function. There's not many valid options for things you can really pass it. So, yeah. But it does mean when you're using your code, you will get warnings for stuff, or at least should do, depending on your implementation. That one was nice that it caught that, though. I hadn't realized at first with, as well that you could add types to uh, keyword and option arguments as well, which makes me really happy. I love that. Um, and multiple value returns, but I learned that one a while ago. Okay, what next? Uh, reset? Sure. Makes fear. It's done nothing! Shit. Well, that didn't work very well. Um, set f temp to be that, and body position is not changing. Hmm. Well, then I'm interested to find out how often there's world step down here. Oh, there is not a lot of foo being printed there. What the fuck? Oh. That can't have been ideal. This is actually quite odd. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's... That's happening a lot. Is that just... Buffering? Because I know we've got buffered output, but that's still a bit strange. I mean, like... Okay, so stuff is rendering. So if I put the print here... We get plenty of food. But down in here... Oh, wait! No, I've got this round. Round the wrong way. Print while. There we go. Oh, did that drop? I think that dropped. Ooh. So, let's find out. Um, we'll... Let's get... What is it? Temp zero. Um, and then there's body position whatever. Yeah, that's lower than it was. It's lower than it was. Right. Uh, zero, twenty, zero. Well, that didn't work. Function set if Isaac body position is undefined. What? That's rubbish. Why haven't I have defined that? Um, say continue. Let's go see. You've got to be able to set it. I mean, you've got to be able to teleport objects around. As well as just, uh... Interesting. Oh, well, we'll just add a force instead. That'll be fine. Um, body... Add force. Takes a force vector 3, so we don't need to do set f here. Do this. That didn't have much effect. That didn't either. Damn you! Let's make sure that we're... Definitely using the right one. Oh, what? Now I'm just confused. Reset. Make sphere. 15. Well, that's... That is at least updating the position. Cool. So something's happening. I've got a from Matrix 3. Oh, that would be so lazy if I got a Quaternion out of that. But it would let me just get on with things. Yeah, let's do a load of unnecessary conversion. Set our rotation of thing to be Q from Matrix 3. Why am I got from Matrix 4? That doesn't make any sense because of translation, but I don't like the idea of having to I don't like the idea of having to do this. It's just gross. <sighs> right. Do I have a... No, I don't have a two quaternion. Well, that's stupid. Um, yeah, same problem the other way around, isn't it? So that wouldn't make any sense for me to add that. Matt is... Body matrix. Okay. Well, there's nothing else going on, so that makes sense. Let's drop a cube in here as well. So let's do the same thing to boxes. In fact, actually, wait a sec. Wait a second. We can just do this. We'll get some rotation in here. <laughs> what? What is going on here? Well, there's got to be some either crazy friction or some other crap. Oh, there's nice shadows, though. Ah, oh, I do not want to build a snowman before anyone said that. Right. What's going on? Um, no Tycholine tonight. No. Shin's been busy these days. Hey, Phil Fog. Good to see you. All right. No. Enough. <laughs> Let's 
So when I created this sphere, linear damping is low. What happens if we just do this? I thought there would have been no linear damping, but who am I? I don't know anything. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty shit. <laughs> I messed with this before. I'm sure we had objects bouncing off each other in weird directions and all that crap. But let's, um, we're gonna do this a lot now. What happens if we have a slight offset? Okay. Oh, that. Then we've got rotation as well. Oh, that's a good sign. Oh, it actually, looks alright. Bloody hell. Goodbye. Um. When's this gonna settle? Oh, we've got to. We're gonna have to have a episode with anti-aliasing, or I'm just gonna have to. Nah. I mean, that's just pasting in the FXA, FXXA, whatever it's called. FXA. That's the one. Code and being done with it. Another thing I wanted to test as well while I'm here is getting the state of these objects. So if I, yeah, they're all physics objects. So if I just do map car um, body, is there a body state? Simulation state, there we go. Oh, it doesn't like that, okay. Oh yeah, of course, you dumbass. Continue. Um, and um, X. There's body X. Okay, so they're all active at the moment. That's interesting. I wonder what it takes to... Um, See, in my head, this function would tell us whether this has is now at rest. Also, what the hell's happening to that shadow? Ah, oh, it's disgusting. No. That's not a good sign. Oh, that's going to be the uh, one of the artifacts from last time. Well, how are we meant to deal with that? It was something like... Um, there's the light pipeline. You're going to do, like, with setf, and then it was curl face or something like this. What is the default curl face? It's back, so then you do front. Ooh, that's not how I meant to do it. Oh yeah, not with setf stuff, with setf. Well, that made it worse. <laughs> hmm. Methinks I've got that wrong. Oh well. We'll have a look at that another day. But anyway, there does seem to at least be a... Hang on. If you've got spheres at different points... <laughs> it's just if they're exactly the same position, they will come to rest perfectly on top of each other. Does that make sense? I suppose in a way it does. We just, like, I guess the default friction is really high. I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, that's a bit off-center as well. There's something funky going on here. We'll look at the defaults soon and find out. <laughs> Build a bottle flipper game now. Oh, God damn it! Yeah, I, I can be so innocent sometimes. Two sticky balls. God damn it, me. Uh, yeah, like this time we're not going to make anything decent. Oh, man, there's all kinds of shit with that, those shadows right now. I wonder... I wonder if it's just outside of our um, shadow map. Let's go back to here and draw. Yeah, here we go. Let's, um... If we put ourselves out here... Sure, like that or something. There we go. I'm sure I've got a little helper function for this. Set light. Ah, oh, yes, I've still got to do those border color fixes in. Um... Or do I actually? 
I think I might have done the board of color fixes this week. Hard to remember, to be honest. For now, we'll just get into a position where it doesn't look shitty, and then we'll carry on. That'll do! Currently, this doesn't look terrible. Therefore, it's fixed. Um, play with us. Turn that off. Cool. Ah. Oh, that's disturbing. So... I guess now we've just got to look at what the default settings are for bodies as well. Um, <laughs> I'm not even going to bother reading those ones out. It's getting a bit blue. Right. What are we doing? And how long can I stand looking at this color screen? No. No, no, no. There we go. Much better. Um, so, materials. There's got to be default. Oh, here we go. Set the material interaction between two physics materials to be collidable or non-collidable by default. Okay. Set surface thickness. And you see all these functions take pairs of, mater of uh, material IDs. Um, it's interesting, actually, because there is another part of the API that returns an object that represents a pair of materials. Maybe I can unify those two on the Lisp side, so we have slightly less to think about. Um, but then it would require creating more objects than we need to, so... Default elasticity, default softness. It would be kind of cool, like, how do you do rays in this as well? There's got to be a ray cast thing. There we go. It's in here somewhere. Nice. Oh, look at that. Proper documentation as well. Blimey. So what we could do, for screwing around purposes, is have a thing that we can... Like, hack in a really rubbishy um, pointer to ray function, and then just um, use that for knocking some of these objects around. Actually, the, the other thing we, have, we haven't put in boxes yet, so let's just do that. Let's... That's got to be on the to-do list. So... We take sphere, and we make it box, box, box. That's all the same. Bang. Box geometry, dimensions again, and right now it's two, two, and two. Is there anything else to do there? Probably not. Let's make them a little lighter as well. And Well, let's try one first. Make box. Nope. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Screw that up. Oh, I just got one of those wrong. Let's have a look. What did I do? Called fizz body on something. That doesn't have one. Oh yeah, this isn't a physics thing yet. Well. 
That's going in completely the wrong direction. Did it have a default impulse? It looked like it had a default impulse there. That was very strange. And that is falling slow. What is going on there? Oh, I know why. God damn it. We've still got the update, update method here. We should actually set this to be the uh, update method for all physics things. Um, let's look at which methods are defined for update right now. We have one for sphere. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of the one for box and we'll just let the one for physics thing take care of everything. Um, Camera T, ground T. Yeah, those ones are separate. Yeah, we don't need to update the ground position. That seems to be fine. Okay, cool. Take this. Put it up with the physics thing. Groovy. Nice. Let's make a bunch of them. Loop for I below 20. Do do make box and I still haven't made that bloody random function. Um, if anyone's got a good link for Okay, so I want to create a random um, vector three, but I want the distribution um, to be the same across the entire space. And so that's, so I want a 3D, um, 3D position within a cube and 3D direction. I think the direction one we can probably just do with, mm, no, it just, need, it just needs to be a, uh, a properly normalized distribution across all of it. I don't like because I mean you can just do rand, but then it's not going to be not going to be normalized inside the sphere for a start, if I remember correctly. And I just haven't bothered looking that up yet, which is kind of bad. Okay, so minus twenty uh, random forty. Let's do this. Ah, uh, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Let's just do random 40. Bam! Ah, oh, cool. It works. Hard to argue with that. Apart from all the garbage shadows. <laughs> everything It just fails everywhere. But right, right down here it looks great. That's fine. Just don't look at anything else. Ooh, a little bit of lag though. That is, shouldn't be happening for such a low number of objects. That's very disturbing. Well, you think I'm gonna have to get the profiler again on this at some point? But anyway, so if, um, I wonder if the body matrix function, body matrix four. Yeah, that has a set F. So we don't have a set position, but we do have a set body matrix. Oh, fair enough. Ah, that's kind of crappy. So we'll have to make some helpers for that, but that's kind of trivial stuff. Translation. Um, 
How do we want to do this actually? Can you just multiply together to um, a translation and rotation matrix? Of course you can. That should be fine. Rotation from X angle. I'm just farting around for a bit now. Because <laughs> I can. Ah, whatever. Come on. <laughs> Oops. That was dumb. What have we got there? Axis angle. Oh yeah, the last. Ah, it should be fine. What was it complaining about? M4 translation. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, that makes sense too. Whoops. Yeah, that'll do. That's what I wanted to see. Cool. All right. What next? It's raining cubes. Um, the monolith floats away. Yeah, that was that was weird. Well, it was weird for a second. New dynamics is optimized for accuracy. Um, which means it might go slowish route to support enough accuracy. That's a good point. It does have different modes, though, than I, ex than uh, if I remember correctly. Let's go and find that because there should be settings. Okay, so we can set the stack size. That's not what we want. We want same as Newton creates. Um, Set contact. These are the tolerances. Broad phase algorithm. That sounds promising. Section locks. Thread counts. Oh, that's cool. Interesting. Um, Multi-threaded solver on single island, cool. Dispatch thread job, thread jobs. I didn't know I had a th uh, threading thing in here. That's kind of cool. If I can just farm some of this out to speed things up, that would be rather nice. Um, I'm not sure how Commonlisp interacts with threads started by C libraries, though. Are they like actually like if you use something like Bordeaux threads, can you see them like? I guess I'll just have to test that sometime. If anyone knows, that'd be lovely. Um, set solver model. We'll create a maximum. Default is things to fix. Right. Set the solver precision model. N. The solver will execute maximum of n iterations per cluster of connected joints and will terminate regardless of the joint uh, residual acceleration. If it happens that the joints acceleration falls below the minimum tolerance, Terminate. Okay. There's quite a few things we can tweak here, actually. It might also be that I'm just using it incorrectly. That's also a very real possibility. Um, float size, da, 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 da. we don't need any of that. Let's 
for the callbacks. I'm really happy with the library as far as what hooks it gives you um, from a bindings point of view. There's so many places to hook in your own destructor functions and own IDs and data and stuff like that. That's really nice. Okay. Um, actually, Borodust, if you were asking about before, you were saying whether things are tightly bound regards to the solver and the other part, simulation and solver and stuff like this, I think you can pretty much implement a lot of the stuff yourself. So if you just wanted to check for object collision and all that kind of stuff, that that is all in under your control. Um, Jay says, as long as the outside threads are very careful about how they call into list, but even then, um, oh, heavily implementation defined. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess that in um, to a degree, just because I mean, threads are not part of the standard. But yeah, it's a good point. I should I should find out. That'd be something just good to know in general. List maintained thread local stuff to do its match. Ah, good point. Actually, yeah, if the thread's kicked off by the other side, there's no way for this to hook into that. So I guess you kind of always want to create threads yourself and hand them over. Um, have to be careful without them. Yeah, collision detection stuff. Yeah, all right, thanks. Okay, so what is this broad phase algorithm stuff? It's, I mean, it's just going to return an int, I guess. So, uh, world broad phase algorithm. Oh, I've got it wrapped at least. Default. Oh. I've made things for it, so I must have had information on this at some point. Ah, solver model. Oh, cool. The world solver model. I love it when past me has done stuff. Okay, exact, adaptive, and something else. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, good TV, me just silently reading. Um, yeah, so it looks like we could set linear mode and tweak this. We'll try not to reduce the number of joints relative to... Because I'm having difficulty accepting that the little work that we're doing... I mean, like, obviously there is overhead from... Um, the Lisp side, because we're looking up objects and doing all that stuff all the time, but it's not that much. We've done a lot more number crunching without any issues previously, so I'm slightly remiss to that. There's also, I think there were some places in the um, bindings that I was doing a couple of slow things, but I thought I would have spotted those the other day when I was going through and it types to everything, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm allocating more things than I would like, but Okay, this, yeah, is important for applications where speed is the only important factor, for example, video games. Um, okay, so we could just set, set model to, and then I guess it's, what's a sensible value for um, for this thing? So anyway, we'll look at solver model. Solver model, here we go. Oh yeah, right here. The guy who works on this is very smart, but it doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't spell check anything. But uh, that's something I can do. I can just go through and fix up these docs. That's not a biggie. So let's just Google for this and see what we get. Okay, so this... Solver model, 
Okay. Okay, when set to zero, anything other than zero, it uses the iterative solver that calculates the forces and make a small contribution in each pass. Ah, I guess we can just screw with that number until we find the sweet spot. Um, what happens if I just set that to four? Well, I do get four back. <laughs> Let's reset and do the loop again. Yeah, it's kind of behaving nicely. That's all right. I can live with that. Cool. Oh, well, learn's a thing. Nice. So we'll probably, maybe we'll set the default, if we can find a kind of sensible default, because I mean, people are going to be using this for games predominantly. I think the default should be fast and then you can add accuracy when you need it, because it's not terrible, regardless. Um, play with this. So one thing I want to do, I want to do this really simple picking and clicking to add an impulse to something. I'm going to actually disappoint, I want to add like a force to one of these objects. Actually, let's uh, like, uh, sorry, I was going to play with that in the REPL, but no, let's do the picker. Now, this is not the correct way to do, um, to get a ray from, um, from your screen coordinates, but I can't remember the proper way and I don't fancy looking it up right now. So, bodged ray is something. Takes a camera. Um, an X and a Y. And the X and Y is going to be between 0 and 1. Um, so we will do something. But first, I want to see what you folks are saying. And I think I'm going to grab another coffee. Do you have a declaim optimized debug safety 3 somewhere? I bloody hope not. That would make me really angry. <laughs> um... Debug 3 is enough to actually send down, slow down simulations. Yeah, I, I mean, everything in my maths libraries and everything in um, the physics stuff, all the bindings at least, is speed 3, debugger 1. Um, yeah. Pardon me. Coffee. All right, if you'd forgive me pausing you for a second, um, I will run off and grab that coffee and I will be right back.
And back. Boridas says, if anyone's interested, I have some little demos to demonstrate how primitives work in ODE in Lisp environment. That'd be cool. Stable laugh too. Nice one, man. Yeah. As with always, always with these things, it's the more the merrier. Like, I'm really, really glad that the, uh, the work you're doing on your engine just adds that to the, the Lisp space because I'm not going to be working on a proper engine anytime soon. So it's, it's good to have, yeah, something that people can go to because I know I won't get around to that at any, at any real speed. I'm still going really slow and working on sketch. That's terrible, really. Need to do that. Anyway, um, fill the view. And then what do we do? We're going to normalize um, this stuff. So it's going to be x times 2 oops, minus 1. Same for y. Oops. Yeah. x and y are in the minus 1 to plus 1 range. And then, um, actually, no, x and y will pass in as... Uh, window space coordinates, so we'll need to fuck with them a little first. View size is viewport resolution for the current viewport. So then we can do x is x divided by x of v size. Y, 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 Delilah. And then I'm just going to do horrible hacks. Horrible hacks. Right, so. Um, rotation is Q multiply. This is Q axis uh, from axis angle. Vector three, we're going to rotate around the y coordinates by what amount? That's well, going to involve radians of the FOV. Times by NX. Yeah, that'll do. Y, that'll probably give us a rotation that works. And so yeah, then the origin will be the origin of the camera, and this will be, be the rotation onto the ray. Let's uh, make a test object for this. I want to visualize this. Um, oh, apply gravity. That should move up with uh, physics things as well. It's a regular old thing. Um, and it's a box and its size is what are we gonna do? 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 10. No, actually we'll do a cylinder because because of reasons. Um 0 0.1 and yeah, 10 will be fine. Um don't really need that. Oh fuck it, doesn't matter. Okay. Make laser. Yeah, don't need to worry about that. Worry about this and don't need to worry about bodies anymore. Just set the position to be well. Position is going to be the default position, so we don't have to care about that. We don't have to care about torque or this. Anything to do with the physics body, really. Um, push the laser onto the list of things. Actually, I just want to. Um, yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. And uh, 
def method update. What is the update default update method for a thing? There isn't one, is there? Ah, it doesn't matter. So the thing is a laser. And it doesn't do anything. Whoa, okay. Yeah, that's not defined yet. Come on, fool. Oh, the update function's gonna be slightly different than I remember, isn't it? Yep, it takes the delta. Oh, because it was easier just to type that out. Okay. And do this. The hackiest time in the world. Cool. Right. And, hmm, what time were we at anyway? Bloody hell, it's half nine already. Okay, this was, is going to go on for a while. Um, let's have a look. So let's just say that when if um plays laser, Let's laser make laser. Come on. Let's go up into the controls and we'll just say when we're holding down the right mouse button, we're going to place the laser. We've got some code up here for mouse button. Let's use that. How are you folks doing, by the way? I know it's a slightly different episode to normal. Hey, hanging over there. All right, let's get this bodged rotation. Really? Yes, really. Okay. that camera and the we're gonna get the how do we get the mouse position again one second let's bring the REPL up it's mouse zero mouse position is that that's fine um, okay if the mouse position is a vector two then Impulse is X of impulse. And oh, yeah, I'm actually doing this in the wrong place, aren't I? We've made the laser, and then we're going to create the rotation and set the rotation of laser to be. What's it going to be? Um, that's going to be root. It's going to be rot. And then we're going to set the. Whoa. Set f the position of the laser to be um, the position of the current camera. And we don't want it to be bound to that forever. So let's do that and find out what happens. Oh, there is an object, but something's wrong. Actually, let's uh, let's see what happens. Um, if I stop updating the position for a second, I should be able to do this. Okay, so some part of that is working, but a lot isn't. Okay, so well, part of it is going to be that again, it's facing up, so we need to rotate it. 90 degrees to start with. Um, we should be taking into account the direction the K 
camera is looking as well. How does that work then? Q times rotation of camera. There's a proper way of doing this as well, and this isn't it. But we're just about done. Oh. Now we're proper dead. What the hell? Oh! That's. That looks like a hang. Oh shit, we broke something! No! Memory errors. Fuck. Oh well. Okay, time for a reset. That sucks. I guess this is going to force me to get it into a shape that I can push the code at least. Um... Doing good, thanks. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, we're bodging lasers. It's all, all my tributes to the people watching. Um, we're getting Dutch naming conventions going on in here. Oh, come on. How much is this going to... What are you on about? Oh, okay, yeah. I need to load this now. Hack upon hack. I will push the code this week, but it's not going to be very valuable. <laughs> starting to get nervous now. Of the... Uh, that memory thing. That is... It is very odd. Oh, idiot. Don't do that. Right. Okay, so where do we get to? Yeah. Go to this bit. Well, that might be, right? <laughs> A bit fat to tell, though. Um... Let's turn off setting the position for a second and see what the behavior is when I do this. Okay, so that's backwards, but that's correct. Um, no. Ah. No, that's not. Let's just do minus. Um, yeah, there we go. Wait a second there. That was wrong. Interesting. That'll do. That is something approaching array that points where we're pointing. Right, so let's loop and get a bunch of objects back in again. And uh, set the world solver model to four so it's nice and quick. And hopefully, we're going to be able to cast some rays in the time we've got left. We've got half an hour. Maybe, maybe better be able to do it in that time. Um, so, the direction is Q two direction from rotation. So our origin then is wherever the camera is and our uh, direction is, well, whatever we said. Let's put this, we'll just use the laser for roughly visualizing where it's going. Um, setting the position to be um, 
should we do this? V3 plus um, direction times something. Who knows? That might map. <laughs> that's so wrong. Yeah, that's that's completely wrong. That's wrong. Don't need to do that. Um, <laughs> good stuff. Let's pretend that's roughly it. We'll see how close it lines up. All fudge factors tonight. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go and look up in Newton for how to do ray casting. World ray cast. So it takes a world and do we have documentation for this? Oh, we do. Nice. Okay. I can love it when that works. So shoot ray from point P0 to P1 and trigger callback for each. Okay, so where's the callback set? Is that the filter? By writing the callback filter function in various ways, the application can implement different flavors of raycasting. For example, an all body raycast can easily be implemented by having the filter function always return one and copying each rigid body um, into an array of pointers. Okay, the closest hit raycast can be implemented by saving the body with the smallest intersection parameter and returning the parameter t and report the first body hit can be implemented by having the filter function return zero after the first call and saving the point to the bridged body first body hit sounds correct for us we also have some type information up here so our filter is going to be a function that takes well actually I'm, what I might do is jump to here it's going to be easier to read ray filter function is one of these it takes geometry takes two vector threes did I just close the window I was interested in yes I did Filter, takes body, geometry. Um, what are the two vector threes for? Pardon me. Now we'll just say A, B, C for the sine byte, and D for that single float. Because what we're going to do is do the first thing they mentioned. So the first hit is returning zero after the first call and saving the pointer to the rigid body. So that's that's the one we're interested in. Um, most common way to use the raycast function is the closest body hit. In this case, it is important for performance reasons that the filter function return the, returns the intersection parameter. Which one's the intersection parameter? If the filter function returns a value of zero, the raycast will terminate immediately. Um, Function returns a value of zero, the ray cast will terminate immediately. If pre filter is not null, Newton will also call um, the application right before executing the intersections between the ray and the primitive. Oh, okay, that's a that's a nice. Function returns zero, ray, Newton will not ray cast the primitive. Fair enough. Passing a null pointer will ray cast the. Oh, oh, that's a mistake. I'll need to go fix that documentation. The application can use this to implement faster or smarter filters when implementing complex logic. That makes sense. So I guess it's really, can we get away with, with just saving out the body? Um, so if we do world raycast, the world and we're going from point 
A to B, so that's going to be from the position of the camera to um, B3 times, so that's direction 3, or direction multiplied by, let's just say 20, so that's 20 units away. Uh, the filter function, I don't know how lazy we can be with this, might be okay, let's just, let's just try a lambda, let's try... No, nothing to well, nothing we need to implement. So that would be cool if that works, man. Oop. Oh yeah, just a lot of complaints about things being never used. Declare um, no all other stuff. No other type issues so far. Let's just see what happens now. Oh, didn't like that. Okay. The value world ray filter CV is not of the type alien pointer. Oh, I fucked something up. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's... Oh, no, that's a problem, actually. See, I had added some magic for... Hmm. Not sure what's going on here. So we know that we've got callbacks that work because we use them for applying the gravity on every frame. And this is trying to use... Let's go to World Raycast. I think this is the point where we find out the bindings are broken. This sets the filter function to be the function we provided and then goes and calls the world raycast with this guy. Hmm, kind of strange that it's just a symbol though. Not sure about that. So Isaac callbacks are the default callbacks. And so how have we done the one with the physics? So apply force and torque. This guy is definitely working. Um, and this is world ray. It's just another callback function. That should be fine. Wait a second. Okay, I'm fine. I see a mistake here. So when you're providing the callback, you should call get callback with the symbol. That makes sense. And then that's going to get passed in. Doot. Continue. Oh, and again, did I manage to break it? No, but oh yeah, we're, we're still alive. We're still alive. Oh dear, though, doesn't like that at all. Did I not compile that? Am I that stupid? It's quite possible. Ah, oh. the fun of making bindings. Right, that was pre-filter. You fool. Okay. Wait a second. So where's filter? Ah, oh, Chris. Same thing again. Idiot. Now there's some lag for reasons I don't understand. 
And now... Oh, shit! Well, it's hitting something. Ho oh, ho! Okay. Of course it's hitting the floor, isn't it? I mean, if nothing else, it's going to hit the floor. And do we get different objects ever? Yes, we do get different objects. So this... Um... Oh, yeah, look, some of them have got apply gravity. So, well, that's cool. Yes! Right, first things first. We found a bug. Let's fix it. So, um... Fix callbacks for raycast. Okay, that'll do for now. Ah, I can't be bothered to work out why yet. I'll deal with you later. Just need this to work. So now we've got some object. And we're going to do something with it. Let's give it some impulse. Body. Um, add force. Add impulse. What's the... Let's see, I'm not used to the physics stuff yet. So I'm not sure what um, I want to add. Do I want impulse? Or do I want force? Let's just do when hit and what else do we want to know about it? We want like I kind of want to know I want it yeah, it has to have mass. That's the other thing. When hit and body mass of hit is greater than zero. Body add impulse hit. Zero, one hundred, zero. <laughs> that was something. Something got fucked up. God damn. That to be pretty close to... Okay, so the ray is completely wrong, but... <laughs> but something's happening. So where are we? Okay, so a couple of things. Let's make the ray further than it is at the moment. So 50. Let's... Um, what else? Let's make... Oh yeah, that's something I never did actually. We didn't ever normalize this quaternion. I mean, if there was a massive problem, we would have seen it. Oh, this is good though. Something's happening. Right, let's do 60, so it's not completely fucked. Let's call that loop to get more things. Ooh, that slowed it down. And then... <laughs> then we're getting something. Where are the things we're hitting? When do we get... Oof. If we, if we reset... Oh. I'm alright with this being the conclusion for Zach. Ugh. Not like this. Not like this. Okay. Um, rotation we don't care about. Translation. Let's bring these guys in a little. 20 20. 10 10. Random 40. Random 20. Have I, have I done something else stupid? I don't know. That'll do. <laughs> God damn, I wonder where we're actually shooting. It'd be nice if we could draw a debug line actually. Oh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So what I actually need to do, because I thought I could bodge in this silly ray thing. Um... Oh, wait. Hold on. We have a direction and a position, but we're using it incorrectly. Um, where's that ray cast? 
position. Now, oh yeah, that's a bit better. It's not spot on, but... Oops. Bam. Nice. Oops. Well, that's kind of cool. Appreciate that it doesn't just go pounding through the floor, even though I am applying force there. Ciao. Ah, oh, that's fine. Get rid of that print as well, because it's annoying me. Anyway, yes. Obviously, you're not meant to implement uh, the ray like this. Uh, you're meant to have the origin position be on the near plane and take all that count stuff into account. But I don't know that off the top of my head yet. Anyway, we've got a thing. A thing that works. So that, to me, is uh, success enough for this evening. Um, what else can we throw in here? Let's reset again. Um... Let's do, yeah, let's do 20 boxes and five of them spheres at least. Seven spheres. There we go. Poof. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Going miles. Let's turn the force down and see if we can get it side. See, now I'm just distracted. Now we've got something that kind of works. I'm going to be playing with this for ages. Add impulse 60. Let's just go five. See what we get with five. Reset. Oh, it's actually going. That was nice. <laughs> Broken shadows, dodgy physics. Well, the, the physics is solid. The uh, dodgy bit is the screen picking. But, oh, it works though. That's fine. That'll do. Not bad for this. Cool. All right, I know I've said this like three times already, but that is, that's good enough for me for the stream. Um, any questions before we go? Shout them out. And otherwise, we'll, we'll call it a day. Publish and be spammed. Woohoo. I know, endless game for me. Yeah, me too, dude. I, I'll just be fiddling with this for ages now. I, I'll obviously need to go back and um, mess with the shadows. I mean... I'm just saying things all of us already know, so I'll stop doing that. Um, <laughs> now you have to add the DLC stuff. Yep. Good enough for Steam. Absolutely. Thanks, Phil. Cheers, Pondervim and Brodust. And everyone, that was really nice. Thanks for keep, keeping this fun while I mess around with this stuff. And um, next week, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. And obviously I'll push this in a second. I'll push this in a second. What can we do next week? Um... It really depends, actually, because I have, I, I'm like I say, I, I'm I'm new to all this stuff and learning as we go along on these streams. It's a real pleasure to do that. But I work with fantastically smart people who do, again, quite a few demo scene guys. So people have been doing much better stuff for much longer. And it's really, really nice. So one of those chaps, uh, a guy called Ferris, is coming around this weekend and we're going to look into implementing um, depth of field with this. So I'm going to get taught how that technique kind of works. So if we end up with something working, I might do a bit of a stream on that next week. It's quite likely that it won't end up working though. Um, it's a fairly involved, it's a fairly involved thing and it, it, it's a case of me learning it and then implementing it. So, um, come up pile. There's a name I haven't known well. So far as that. Um, 
oh man, it'd be really cool to have him on the stream. But no, this this is just over the weekend. Like for me to be learning like something like that, I'm gonna need a lot of whiteboard time and a lot of um, a lot of tedious questions. So he'll have to go through that. But I'm cooking for him, so it'll be fine. It's a good trade. It's a good trade. Um, it's saying compressed guests. The dude's actually working on compression stuff at the moment. So uh, oh, it's fucking. We could we could rant for ages about that. Anywho, I think we're done. I think we're done. But if it's if it's not depth of field, it'll be something else. I need to throw some, like I say, I need to throw some anti-aliasing stuff. But that's not really worth a stream. I don't know. I don't know. We'll work out something. Thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you next time. And let's hit the stop button. Do, 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 do. That.